Thank you, Thorsten. President Wiesmann, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good morning and a uh, warm welcome from my side here to our Chef Labous in um, Detroit. We're very pleased that so many of you have come and uh, are interested in our press conference. I want to talk about three things very quickly, uh, an overview of our top line results uh, that we published um, as we speak. Second, a quick update on the strategy mobility for tomorrow. And then most importantly, talk about the technology and the uh, product offering that we are displaying here today at the show. Let me start with the um, top line. As uh, President Wiesmann said, uh, 2017 has been a successful year for the German automotive industry and also for Scheffler. We have uh, reached um, a top line of 14 billion euros for the whole Scheffler group, both automotive and industrial. That means nearly 6% FX adjusted growth. What is compared to the last years, uh, clearly back to where we have been over the last uh, decades, always above 5% on average. We've seen a very strong fourth quarter with 8.5% FX adjusted growth. We're proud to say this growth comes both from the automotive and the industrial division. Um, in previous years, the industrial division was lacking a little bit. It also comes from all our four regions. And here I have to say, uh, once again, Greater China has been the growth champion with 24.1% growth in the year 2017, followed by Asia Pacific and by Americas. And this growth is a result of our innovation strengths. Um, you see it here on the slide once again. Uh, a large number of patents filed, um, significant innovation awards like the PACE awards um, demonstrate this strength. However, it's not all about absolute growth, it's very much about relative growth, so how do we perform compared to the market? And that you see here, after a um, little weaker start into the year 2017, first half weaker, second half very strong, on average 3.6% outperformance towards the global market. Um, if I take the automotive aftermarket out of this equation, it's 4.3%, and that's exactly above of what we said. We want to outperform the market by 4%. You see a really um, great number in the fourth quarter, 7.2%. And once again, that is very much driven by Greater China. But also here, in terms of regional outperformance in the fourth quarter, uh, our America's business, North and South America, has been a key driver and contributor to this growth um, result. On the United States, in general, we have performed well, nearly 5% growth FX adjusted. Um, you see we have um, continuously invested in the United States, two major projects um, I would like to mention, the grand opening, the extension in our headquarter here in Fort Mill, around 35 million US dollar investment, and uh, maybe even more important, the um, investment in Worcester, Ohio, uh, where we invested around 70 million US dollar in the new facility. This is important because Worcester will become or has become our main hub, our main center of competence for e-mobility in uh, the region Americas. And that is clearly based on the continuous success with uh, innovation here. Two PACE awards for 2017, the uh, active roll uh, control uh, on the chassis side and the one-way clutch from the transmission side. So much on the numbers, um, a quick update on the um, strategy. Uh, you know our strategy has been decided in 2016. It's a holistic framework with vision, mission, four focus areas, strategic pillars, and 20 strategic initiatives. I don't want to extend here too much on this. The strategy is um, uh, agreed. There's a clear path going forward, and the year 2018 is a year of execution, a year of delivery, a year where we want to work very hard to deploy our strategy in the best interest of our customers. And uh, if I would summarize, or I need to summarize, the focus of our strategy in one sentence, it's exactly this. 
we want to be the preferred technology partner for our customers globally, but certainly here in the United States. That's also our motto for the show, and that's what we see as a challenge uh, and a major ambition going forward. Let me quickly come to um, what we have decided to change and adjust in the best interest to deliver on this promise. Since January 1st, 2018, we will structure our business from two into three divisions. We have decided to separate the automotive aftermarket business out of the existing division automotive. Um, that balances our structure a little further. 63% of sales will come from OEM, 14 to 15% from aftermarket, and 23 from industrial. And um, as part of this realignment, We've also decided to um, realign the structure within the automotive OEM division that is headed by my dear colleague Matthias Zink, who is uh, in the room. And what is important here is that we have decided to establish a separate business division that we call e-mobility. And this e-mobility division does not, know, does not only include the new business in terms of e axles in terms of hybrid modules, but it will also combine some of the existing activities, in particular from the transmission technology areas, and that will form, from our point of view, a strong base uh, going forward. This goes together with a agreed global setup with three e-mobility centers of competence, one here in Worcester, as I mentioned, the other one in Buell, and then, as you all know, the E-mobility markets are very much driven by the Chinese demands, one in Anting, China. And on top of the organization alignment, uh, the global setup, we have hired a um, new leader for this unit externally. I cannot announce the name today, but it will come very shortly. And this all together, the organization alignment, the global setup, and the new leadership, I think shows that we are very serious in uh, building and extending on our current success of our e-mobility activities. Ladies and gentlemen, this is necessary, as a lot of you know, because the markets are changing. They're changing fast with new regulations, uh, President Wiesmann, with a new perspective on how to solve the CO2 equation that we regard necessary well to wheel and clearly the future mobility demands. We have, uh, thanks to Professor Gutzmer, already started very early to lay out our scenario for the global powertrain development with the 30, 40, 30, 70% 70 of the cars electrified, 70% of the cars still with a combustion engine. And we feel very strongly that we now have this framework that we're going to uh, deliver on. And this is a global scenario. It's important that we look also at the regional aspects of this. And if you follow this um, click, you see what the uh, view on the United States and the North American market is. Here, the um, BEF will clearly have a sh lower share. But in total, it's not very different from what we see uh, on the global scale. And that's something that is important for our transformation going forward. We feel strongly that we need to accelerate this transformation and that the transformation is not a question of if, but a question of how. And here's our answer to this. I do believe, and we as an executive board believe, that the um, changes will not be sudden disruptive changes. They will come as a more continuous move to, into immobility with new powertrain solutions and new powertrain concepts emerging across the spectrum. As all of you know, we are an innovative company. We are very open to new technology. And we intend, as Scheffler, to cover the full spectrum. We're not going to neglect the optimization of the combustion engine, as we'll not neglect the opportunities that come for us with HEF and with BEF. And this applies for all our four business divisions. Let me give you some examples. And these examples are structured in a way that I show you the today so what we're doing today and how we want to extend this technology into the tomorrow. First example, thermal management module, something that we're doing since several years. 
a proven uh, product that we have. Um, another big SOP coming up in Q3 2018, clearly a device to save fuel. And this will extend into the, into the tomorrow with a new technology where we combine the existing thermal management module with what we call smart wells. That helps to optimize the cooling uh, within uh, the engine. It shows again the need for power electronics and for software control units and uh, our competence in mechatronics. Example number two is from the transmission system area. Um, I mentioned the one-way clutch where we won the PACE award. Also, uh, big business coming up. It's in the market. It's a very successful offering. And from there, we will extend um, another example for um, technology where you can build on the existing competence. We will extend into what we call switchable clutches. Uh, these are clutches that help you to reduce drag losses and are relevant very much for hybrid and battery electric powertrain solutions. A third example goes into that direction, and here I'm talking about e-mobility today. This is a um, hybrid module for one of the Detroit 3 companies. Um, we feel very good about this project. It's uh, close to uh, start of production for the North American market, a very successful project, and uh, we already see subsequent business being attracted by this. Um, this will extend, and from, this, from the competence we have here, again, a function of e-motor competence, of power electronic competence, will extend further into new areas that are relevant for BEF, in particular, like these high-voltage EXL we are showing here. One word on the pipeline and e-mobility. Um, we have mentioned this in other um, occasions during the year 2017. Uh, meanwhile, we have built a pipeline of eight series contracts, both in the United States, in Europe, and in China. Uh, the Chinese contracts are the first ones who have started uh, SOP. can mention the names here. One is a big project for Great Wall. The other one is a big project for Chang'an. Both of these cars are in production and are starting the ramp up. Um, what is more important, we have uh, on top of these eight series contracts 25 new projects that are up and running, um, very promising projects, and we're expecting, uh, as we speak, new series contracts from these contracts. This means we have our hands full to deliver what our customers are asking for. Um, we want to also here see that we can, over time, standardize um, solutions because it's very difficult to you know, present solutions um, that are individual for everybody. We know that we will extend further into areas where we lack certain competence. Some of you have heard we have just acquired the second half of Compact Dynamics, a superior e-motor uh, developer, and we're clearly looking carefully into the software and power electronic competence we need. Last but not least, let me go into the force area, um, the force business division, our chassis division. And this picture is not so much about the today. Today our chassis business is very much a, a bearing business, a, a business about accessory drives, about actuation. But uh, we see that this trend in terms of um, autonomous driving, about new vehicle concepts uh, like this people mover becomes more and more important. And while we not, will not become a software company, we will clearly look for opportunities here. Uh, you see some of the examples we're working on, an intelligent active roll control, right height adjustment, or steering actuation. And um, while I can't just give uh, more detail here, I want to quickly use the opportunity to uh, introduce a new um, uh, leadership talent we have acquired uh, from TAW in the last uh, year. Dr. Dirk Kesselgruber, well known to the US market from his previous employer, uh, will run the chassis business going forward. And Dirk, we count greatly on your contribution here to um, bring this division also to a great success. Last but not least, uh, we uh, want to announce two um, major um, next uh, events. One is um, we're going to open a small office in um, the uh, Silicon Valley. Clearly, most of the other players are way um, in front of us, but it's important for us that we 
uh, listen carefully what's happening there. Uh, we will not become, as I said, a big software player, but uh, we want to have our eyes on the road and our hands upon the wheel. What uh, comes afterwards is the um, famous Scheffler Colloquium. You know that we are doing this colloquium now since more gener generation, I think Matthias, more than 40 years. Um, and we have built this symposium now into a global format. It starts in Buell, um, uh, in Baden-Baden in April, but will then go around uh, the globe. Uh, we will use it in particular to invite um, the um, technology people, our uh, main customers, to show our strengths on a global basis. And I think that concludes very nicely um, the, uh, the year 2018 in terms of showing our innovation and technology to our customers. Let me summarize here um, very quickly. A successful year 2017 with continued growth and innovation. E-mobility becomes more and more important. We have reacted with an own division, new leadership, and a global setup. Um, the future growth will be secured through all these new initiatives uh, with uh, production starting and also new products, projects coming on board. The focus in 2018 will be very much on e-mobility, but also on optimizing ICE and transmission technology together with the move into mechatronics, Derek, on the chassis side. We will open Silicon Valley, nothing spectacular, but a nice little step. And uh, we look forward to sharing with all of you um, the technology displayed here uh, in Detroit, but clearly also during the Scheffler Colloquium that will become a global exercise. Thank you very much for listening. It's all about the preferred technology partner, and hopefully that is Scheffler to all of you. Thank you very much.